Hey, this is Dylan with Bike to Everything, and today we're gonna create some bike routes just by looking at Google Maps. So, you're probably familiar with uh, looking at this map here. Uh, we just have some roads, but we want to look at biking directions because we wanna bike to everything, right? So, first thing you gotta do is you've gotta click your menu up here and then click the bicycling layer. And look at that, all the bike lanes just show up. You can do this on your phone too by clicking the layers button. Um, once we have this, you can just look at the map and kind of see where the bike paths might be. So, you know, it looks like there's like a long line here, looks like there's like a long line here, looks like there are a lot of different paths through Golden Gate Park, which makes sense because, you know, most of the nice, nice paths are in the park. You might also kind of see a lake and look for the long green lines around here. This is the first thing I do when I you know, want to find a new bike route. I'll kind of look for the long green lines or the parks or the lakes and I'll try to see what I can do. But then there's a lot more that you can do with Google Maps to see what your experience will be like on the road. So let's zoom in a little bit and talk about the different types of uh, bike lanes you have. So here at the bottom, you see that there is a key. You have trails, which is the dark green line, and you have dedicated lanes, which is a different green line. Unfortunately, this green is very similar. If you look very closely here, here's a dark green line that goes through the Panhandle Park of San Francisco. And then next to it, you can see this lighter green line that is not a uh, shared use trail or greenway, but it's a bike path that's on the road. I wish Google would make these colors different or do something else, but that's what we have to work with here. Um, another way to confirm is if you click, it will show a street view screenshot at the bottom if it's available. And you can see this is the bike lane that we're talking about, this lane right here. And then you can kind of look over here this is the path we're talking about with the dark green line. These are very different experiences, but usually the solid green line is a safe place that is exclusively for bicycles, if it's an on-street path or an off-street path. So let's go back here to the map. So we're trying to find, you know, a bike ride uh, we found a bunch of long green lines, but maybe, you know, you live like farther away. I'll just click the marker somewhere. Um, and you want to kind of get through some city streets to get to Golden Gate Park. So the other two types of streets we have are the bicycle friendly roads, as you can see in the key, and then dirt unpaved roads. So the bicycle friendly roads, you can see all over, it's this dotted green line. Um, so the dotted green line, it really could mean anything. Uh, it could mean um, it's a nice street for biking or it could mean it's a bike route. So here's a dotted green line. We're going to click it, look at the street view, glance around a little bit. This looks like a nice wide street. Looks like there would be plenty of room for cars to pass by you. So it wouldn't be very scary. Um, looks like a bike friendly street. Now, let's go to another street that has a dotted green line. Zoom in. We have 3rd Street here. You can click there. This is a two lane highway almost that has a bike share, but as you can see here, the lanes are not that big and then you have some railroads to cross and this is just not the most bike friendly street and you can even see it from looking at the street view here. Uh, so you have to be careful um, when you see that it's a bike friendly street and kind of I use street view or maybe satellite view to confirm that it's really something that I'd be comfortable biking on. Um, when Google is routing you it might route you on these streets and if that happens, it's usually not a big deal because you can either ride on the sidewalk for like a block or there's usually another street, you know, see there's this one or other streets here. This one might be like a little bit easier to go on. See, this is a, a nice looking neighborhood street that doesn't look nearly as dangerous as this main street 
of Third Street. Uh, while we're going over the key, uh, let me go up to North Bay where you have some off street trails. Unfortunately, the key is just simply wrong right now on Google Maps. It shows this like kind of brown line, which used to be the case, but apparently they updated the lines without updating the key. So thanks, Google. Uh, but this is now, um, this like dashed line is a bike friendly uh, dirt road. Um, and so I think this dotted line is just a bike friendly street. Um, and also don't let this dashed line be confused with this lighter dashed line which is a hiking trail where either bikes aren't allowed or there's just no information on when they're, they're allowed or not. Um, of course, all of these lines that Google makes, you hope that they're correct, but when you get there, sometimes it might say no bicycles, um, and so it is confusing. I know that in, uh, in Golden Gate Park here, it shows these paths as you know, bike-friendly trails, but I believe that upon the entrance to Stowe Lake, it says no bicycles. So I don't even know the, the correct rules there. There's one last thing to know about the bike friendly roads. By default, every road is not a bike friendly road. So if you just go to a random spot on the map, you know, if they haven't looked at these streets, they're not going to be bike friendly. This means that there could be a lot of secret bike-friendly roads that are bike-friendly, but you know, they just haven't been notated as such. So if you just like click, you know, over here and click in here, this looks like a pretty bike-friendly road. Uh, it's kind of neighborhood residentially and not very crowded. So because uh, it's by default not a bike-friendly road, there might be a lot of streets that are great to bike on that aren't marked on Google. So you want to keep that in mind while you're going around and you know there might even be like a busy bike lane on a busy street um, but it might be maybe nicer for you if you wanted to go on a street next to it that's residential. Uh, lastly because it is COVID times we have this new marker uh, you can see the dashed blue line. These are the slow streets that San Francisco is implementing. Other streets, I mean, other cities may have a similar kind of thing where there's like no through traffic um, and cars are discouraged from going there so that people can use the street to walk, run, bike, and social distance. So Lake Street up here actually has a bike lane, but now that, you know, cars are not there, um, they've just, Google has just slapped on this slow street over the bike lane uh, notation. So if you see a slow street, you can probably uh, think of it as a great street to bike on. So now that we've gone through kind of like what all the uh, types of streets you can find on the Google Maps cycling directions, let's kind of, you know, make our route. Say we want to go uh, somewhere here in Golden Gate Park. I'll just click. Um, and I'll click the directions button. And for the starting point, I will just click somewhere down here in dog patch to get a nice long ride. And now Google gives you uh, its route that it thinks you should go on. Um, unfortunately, the route covers up any potential lines. So you will not know if these are bike friendly streets or bike lane streets or bike paths unless you kind of pull the route away and then you see it. And then you can kind of, oops, uh, you can kind of tap again on that marker to remove it, and then the route will be moved back. Um, or you could just, you know, click the X to kind of take it away. Uh, now, mostly what I use this for is, of course, help with routing. But really, I want this elevation chart because I want to know what the elevation is like on this ride, especially if I wanted to, you know, just look at the Embarcadero and see what kind of hill I'm going to be riding. So it looks like this is a pretty chill ride. You know, you could even see its other options or then this one, a lot more climbing here. You can even hover over to see where the top of the mountain is. Looks like the top is right around here. As you can see, we're moving the same thing. So 
this is something that you can look at and kind of try to avoid the hills if you want to. Uh, so let's do another example. I want to show you Valencia Street because this is something that Google Maps does. So let me get a direction started just going down Valencia Street. See how it says mostly flat over here? Now it is generally flat on Valencia. I have ridden there before. However, if you actually click this button, you'll see that 7 feet up, but 56 feet down. So while this is flat, this is still a hill. And if you're going the other direction, this is going to be 52 feet up. And you know, if you have a heavy bike that's not electric, you might want to know this information here. So beware of the mostly flat designation. You always want to open that up. So let's do an example bike route in a place I've never been to before. I wrote a post, how to plan a fun bike route, and I used Nashville, Tennessee as my example. I have since been there and rode some of the routes, but I'll just go through that same example. Um, you know, here you can go to Nashville with the cycling directions. You can see there's some stuff in town. See there's some like green lines down here, some green lines over here. These look like mountain biking trails, that dashed line I was talking about. Again, not the same as this solid line. Unfortunately, the key is broken. Uh, so first of all, the river trails look awesome here. Like I'd want to do those. And then it looks like there's this big kind of line around the park here. So let me uh, make directions to see what the elevation of this path here. So let me click here to start. And I'm going to click on the other side. And here we have an elevation chart. 30 up, 0 down, um, and then it even shows the other way. Um, say we wanted to add a destination that's maybe over here. Um, so, and then maybe drag it around even so that we can see what the entire loop is going to be like. So here's what it is, 36 feet up, 16 feet down. However, you can't see, you know, there's looks like there's like a little hill right here that you're going to have to climb most of those uh, 30 feet and the rest of it is pretty flat. Looks like it's also called the Richland Creek Greenway so you could even Google there. Greenway Nashville. And look at that, it highlights it on Google even, that's pretty cool. Or you can see it on Trailink which is a great place to uh, find trails. Look at that, you have all of the information. Of course when I went there I just looked at the map and kinda saw this cul-de-sac and parked there which had a really nice entrance. You can kinda see what it looks like here. We just parked right here and went along this greenway. So I want to bring up another example where satellite view can really help with finding these bike paths. Here is a close-up of Asheville, North Carolina which I passed through and I was crossing this bridge here and I saw a bike path along the river and when I checked the map you can look here there's nothing there it looks like there's nothing there but if you click the satellite button and you look look at everything that shows up you have this path that goes along the river and you even have a path along the other side of the river that is not shown you just have this bike friendly road and so these paths seem to go along the river for you know a little while maybe it, maybe that's all or maybe it turns into a dirt path but there are times when these paths like aren't showing up at all but satellite might be more up to date and you can kind of get some tidbits of information that you couldn't otherwise especially in these more rural areas so I really like Google Maps just because I can see everything, I can get the directions, I can get the hills. There are definitely things to be desired, but I use that a lot as a first or maybe a last step. However, there are a lot of other things that can help you plan here. Uh, I've opened up some tabs. First of all, there's the Strava global heat map. Say we're back in Nashville, we can kind of see all of these bright lines, which is where people are commonly biking. So this was the uh, path that I showed you earlier. You can see it's pretty bright. Um, and I, I clicked the uh, bicycle uh, 
activity type, so I see only that. So, you know, maybe these streets aren't uh, a good place to bike. Um, there's also OpenStreetMap, which shows off some streets. I don't think it's very easy to read, though, um, just because, you know, they have these big lines that are not very uh, high fidelity, and I don't really know what they mean sometimes because a national cycleway and a regional cycleway and a local cycleway, these can just mean something that the government's decided this is going to be a bike route. That doesn't really give you any information about what kind of bike lanes are on the ground sometimes. So I find that this doesn't always match up to real life very easily and there's no easy way to do street view on this map. Um, people also like ride with GPS, which uh, you can kind of plan routes here. I think planning routes is like the best part about it because you can take this route and send it to a GPS or your phone or something like that. However, I find it again hard to read and even here in San Francisco, it's missing like the main thoroughfare through the mission being Valencia. So it kind of, and like these, these are a lot of these paths in Golden Gate Parks are not actually bike paths. So I don't really know what this is even uh, trying to show me here. The one I really do like is Trail Link. And these are probably nice, smooth, shared use paths. Even if I'm looking at the other maps, I usually like to route it at least once in Google Maps or see what there is. And if I go back and forth here, you can kind of see, you know, this path is still there, this path is also there, this path is there. So Trail Link is great, but usually it's just a subset of Google Maps. And of course, you want to make it easy to use on your smartphone probably so that if anything changes you can kind of look at your smartphone and change any routes. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more and check out other tips on biketoeverything.com. Happy biking!